All right, so this is a lesson in what salt does. And by the end of it, you'll know how to make a decision about when to add salt to get the result that you want. So um, we're gonna cook courgettes and aubergines, which are two quite watery vegetables, and show how salt draws water out and how that affects the cooking. So we're to some more pans here. I'm just gonna put some olive oil down. The pans are nice and preheated. And just when the oil gets nice and hot, which is pretty immediate, I'm gonna throw in the vegetables. So for this experiment, I'm just gonna put a little bit of salt in one pan and leave the other pan unsalted. That way we'll see what salt does and what that means for our food. So what we're gonna to start to see is that the salt's gonna start drawing the water out of the vegetables in a process known as osmosis. So this pan, since it has no water, it's already starting to brown. And browning is a reaction that can't happen until all the water on a surface has evaporated. So since the water is being drawn out and pulled to the surface of these vegetables, it's gonna take a little bit longer for all of that water to evaporate before browning can really properly begin in this pan. This pan you can already hear, it's sizzling and browning has started to occur. And I do feel like um, both aubergines and courgettes are vegetables that really benefit from some nice browning. I like my vegetables to be brown because so much delicious flavor comes from that browning. All of these new flavors are introduced into our food from browning, including sweet tones and caramelly tones, fruity tones, all those kinds of things that you can't really put your finger on, but it's just a delicious flavor that pops in your mouth. So, um, and the problem I think with this pan is gonna be mostly that they're just gonna get mushy and cooked all the way through and quite soft before they have a chance to brown. And so you'll have mushy vegetables. Now that these vegetables have browned, they've sort of done the important thing. They're almost cooked. It's a nice time to add a little salt. It's okay now if a little bit of water comes out because they've already done their browning. So we can just toss them with a little salt and let them finish cooking through. These ones are still steaming away. And these guys are just starting to fall apart now because the salt is sort of like messed with the cells and messed with the cell structure. This pan, these are all beautiful, distinct pieces, lovely golden brown on all sides. So the lesson here isn't so much, don't salt your vegetables before you cook them. It's more to think about what's gonna happen in the pan and what are you after. So there are some times when I cook onions, for example, that I don't want them to brown. For example, when I'm making a, let's say a white corn soup or a cauliflower soup that starts with an onion base, I don't want those onions to turn brown. So that's a great reason to add salt at the beginning with the onions to help draw that water out and help, them, help give them a chance to cook through all the way, get really tender without turning brown. There are other times when I'm after browning and after caramelization, and that's exactly when I do wanna be more thoughtful about when I add salt. So one way to do it is to not add salt until you've gotten the brown, delicious surface that you want. Another way, for example, is since you know that these vegetables are quite watery, you can salt them in advance. Salt them 15 minutes before you cook them, let the water come out, pat it off and then cook them. That way the salt has a chance to go all the way in and you get the browning that you're after before the vegetables get mushy. So it's good to know what salt does for your food.